Dr. Jen Berman. Psychologist Jen Berman is a relationship therapist. Good morning, Matt. Jen Berman is a therapist and also the author of a book called A to Z Guide to Raising Happy, Confident Kids. Jen Berman is a licensed therapist. Introduce psychotherapist Dr. Jen Berman. She's in our audience today and an expert on self-esteem issues. First couple checking in today are Juan Pablo Galaviz and Nikki Farrell, who met on ABC's hit reality show, The Bachelor. Hello, I'm Dr. Jen Berman. So nice to see you all. Welcome to Couples Therapy. I always like to start our first day in here in this room, because this room is the epicenter of all of the work that we do. We say in therapy that the only way out is through. Around here, we are going to push you to step so far out of your comfort zone, it's going to make you really uncomfortable. If you're not doing that, then you're not doing the work. We tend to go through life with these things that we don't like to talk about. We bear these burdens and we bring them to our relationships. And if we don't talk about them, our relationships suffer. And we're going to challenge you to do that. It's what you have to do to heal your relationship. I have tremendous respect for the work that you do. So I want to start by saying thank you. And I'm really honored to be here to get to talk to you. And I'm hoping that as I speak to you today, that the information that I give you will make your lives a little easier, will make your work a little more conflict free, and will make your jobs a little better. There are typically five things that prevent us from really hearing the other person. The first is anxiety. Oh my God, I might lose my job. They might reduce my hours. They might be planning to, to hire someone else. So it can be really scary and hard to listen and to have a really effective conversation. The other thing that can really affect you is anger. And we all have it. And I know as ladies, we're kind of taught by society, oh, we're not supposed to be angry. It's okay to cry, but it's not okay to be pissed. But we get angry. And especially when we suppress those emotions, that's when they kind of bite us in the butt the most. And if you are having that experience, you know, I can't believe she talked to me that way. It makes it really hard to be present and to hear what's happening and to have actually a productive conversation. Come, yeah, come close. This is a little fiction here. Yeah, I told you, fiction. I, I told you I needed a good actress. You're, okay. you're my good actress, okay? You ready? Okay. T tell her all about why this is important to you and your family. Um, I've done a lot of research on this, and I've read a lot of articles. <laughs> And I have a guru that I just know when I read what she says, that's what I do. And I've talked to my neighbors, and I've talked to my sister-in-law, and I've talked to my mother, and we all think that this is the way it should be done. All of us. <laughs> okay, come on up. This is where I'm still doing gone. it a year later. I think you are okay, now, tell me what you actually want to say. No one else will know. Just tell me what, what's going through your mind that you're not going to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at first, I thought like you're crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was exactly. Right. Yeah. The other thing, and this is kind of not talked about that much, is shame. That sometimes we do something, and again, all of you are professionals, but we all have a bad day. We all have a time where, well, I cut a little corner, or I knew I should have done this, but I'm just too tired. I just did that, and we get caught. And typically, when that happens, we feel shame. And that shame can get in the way of us, again, having a conversation where we hear the other person and where we're able to participate in a meaningful way. Then last but not least, getting triggered. Sometimes we have a conversation where someone triggers something old in us. Maybe your boss talked to you the way your mom talked to you. So that triggers you and you're like, I can't believe that she talked to me the way my mom talked to me and that means she feels about me the way my mom felt and she doesn't respect me and we kind of go off on a tangent in our head and we write this whole script because we're having this big reaction that's not necessarily based in reality, but it sort of pulls us away from being able to listen. I want to start by talking about listening. I'll never forget when I was a new clinician, I was, in order to become a therapist, you have to do 3,000 hours under supervision, where you go to clinics and you work with people in, in a clinic setting, and your supervisor meets with you before you go in with clients and afterwards and supervises you. And so 
before I went into my first session, you know, we're, you're all real nervous and you don't know what to expect and you think that you have to kind of solve the world, that like whatever happens in the session, I have to have the answers to everything. And my clinical supervisor said to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, if you just listen, if you truly listen to what the other person has to say, you'll be providing more than that person has probably gotten in a lifetime. And I think that there's tremendous truth to that because most people don't really listen. We're so busy formulating what we're going to say, getting defensive, making sure that we know what we're going to, what our points are after that other person is done talking, that we are often distracted when the other person is speaking, whether it is the family that you work for or a friend or a loved one. And I really, I'm hoping that today, before you leave, that you will really pay attention to your listening skills and that you will listen in a whole new way. So thank you all so much for coming here today. And again, thank you all so much for the amazing, amazing work you do. I don't know how you do it, but I am so indebted to all of you and so grateful. Thank you. And Dr. Jen Berman is a family therapist and a board member for Parents Magazine. Jen, good morning to you. Good morning. Listening to the Warner's family values, they are truly reflected in a Parents Magazine survey that found, this is a recent survey, found that the top five values that moms want to pass on to their kids are honesty, self-esteem, kindness, self-reliance, and as the Warners reflect, concern for others. All very admirable values. But how do parents get started instilling those in their children? Well, the, the qualities that you mentioned are really the building blocks for a decent moral society. And 70% of the parents polled in the Parents Magazine survey said that they want to instill self-esteem in their kids. And what most parents don't realize is that in order to do that, they need to create kids who have a sense that they can give back. We, that family is a perfect example because those kids know that they can make a difference. And that is really the basis for values and self-esteem.